welcome. My name is Marty Espinola, and my poems are about a local urban park that I've gladly adopted. Forest Park in Springfield, Massachusetts overlooks the Connecticut River Basin and is one of the largest urban parks in the country. It includes 740 acres of woodlands, hiking trails, aquatic gardens, flower gardens, and an outdoor amphitheater. It also has a variety of picnic areas and a lake for fishing. It is a major community athletic center including a wide variety of playing fields, a large community swimming pool, and an indoor ice skating rink. One of the best known features of the park is its zoo. Many adults in the Connecticut River Valley will remember visiting the zoo as children, as do I. They now bring their own children and grandchildren to see the animals and listen to the various educational programs. My first poem is called Summer in Forest Park. On the ridge above the kingdom of concrete rests a treasure of forested acres, a harbor for harried urbanites. The sky, naked of windows and wires, welcomes cloud shadows that roam restlessly over tangles of treetops. The woodland is host to a multitude of creatures. You can delight in deer and duck and dragonflies, appreciate even exotic animal species, alpaca, arctic fox, and alligator. Ponds lie peaceful within its borders, their waters a serene sanctuary welcoming both fin and feather. Children run to the water's edge gleefully pointing at a bird or bug, their smiles blossoming at every new discovery. Among the ash, hickory, maple, and oak, one can explore ever-winding pathways as concealed critters call to one another, sprinkling the silence with their cryptic conversations. My steps here are cushioned by ages of earth as I stride lightly upon this protected land hoping it will remain a nurturing retreat, freely welcoming the footfalls of future generations. A Hunter in the Park. The hunter poses on the far shore, standing stiff within the shallows, staring intently at the reflections of the sky below. Plumage blending with weeds and reeds, it waits for its meal to be served. The strike comes suddenly and swiftly. The feast is swallowed, still struggling. And with a contented stretch and a shake, the heron returns to its stance at the table, waiting for the next meal to be served. The Brooks of Forest Park. Within spirited and shy waters, silver sparkles blink, dancing on beams of sunlight to the tones of torrents past. Stones rest secure in the beds, massaged by swirling streams, content to be aging with grace, sometimes daring to be dislodged. The brook bends with easy grace, carving circuitous paths, carelessly spreading life flowing ever towards some future home. The geese above. I wonder as I watch the arrows of wild geese, horizons seeming their perpetual destination, as they endlessly wave their wings to some avian god, each of them preparing the way for the one behind. Do they follow because they trust the leader knows the way, or is their trust in something beyond sight, in some spiritual skyscape within each of them? It makes me wonder, is the destination as important as just being part of the flock, knowing you'll get there together, trusting in each other? I wonder. Thank you.